Derek, is there any motivation uh, going to play Houston for, you know, after the game you had against them a couple weeks, or is it just simply go out there and just focusing on this game in particular just to have a good game for yourself? Uh, yeah, not really try to get too caught up, caught up in the um, – in the last game, uh, didn't play well enough. But just really the main focus is playing better than um, the, the previous game and um, playing a lot better, really. So um, they did a great job last game. Um, you know, just watch a lot of film, see a lot of things you can correct and, and learn from, and then go out there and try to uh, be effective and efficient on Sunday. You guys maybe picked up some momentum on Sunday with the way you were able to break off some good runs and some holes were there? Yeah, I thought the O-line did a great job of – opening up holes, moving guys off the balls, tight ends, receivers. Um, you know, it takes uh, all 11. I feel like they all did a great job on Sunday. you say anything to a guy like Rupchich or Ojukwu or any of these guys that are playing for the first time about what to expect? Um, um, I mean, they do scout team for us. Um, they're on the practice squad, so I think they, you know, they know, um, you know, what this league is like and you know how they need to prepare and go play and um all I can do is just encourage them and um you know uh want to play with confidence and I feel like they've they've been doing that and giving giving it their all. Derek what did they do so effectively the first time to bottle you guys up at the line of scrimmage and how can you counteract that now two weeks later? Yeah I just think that um you know they have their scheme um which is uh not too much uh, on their players. Um, they have guys that are fast, that are penetrators, um, um, smart, um, and and instinctive, and you know they play very well together. Um, and I think they got a, a good thing going over there on the, on that side of the ball. But uh, as far as our end, it's just um, paying attention, like I said, to the last game, seeing the things that we need to do better. Um, that th some things that we need to correct um, individually and collectively, and um, work on it out here until Sunday, and then um, execute it uh, when we get out there in Houston on Sunday. Is it something when it was so not the way you wanted it to go a couple weeks ago? Is it something where you view the film and you see, like, it's one guy here, one guy there, and we can get through? Or do you have to do things very different? I think it's uh it's all of it. Um, but first and foremost, I'm looking at myself and be very critical of myself, like I always am. And um, I need to be better in that game, um, you know, to give ourselves a chance. And that's been my heavy emphasis is just focus on playing better, um, being detailed, um, watching film, um, when we're out here practicing, just uh, focusing up on the things that I need to do better than I did last game. Oh, he just cruising by like he at the beach or something. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, just uh, just focus on being better. That's just gonna be better overall, really. Derek, as you get later in the season, well, what are some of the things that you do just to keep yourself fresh and just ready to go and handle the volume that you gotta handle? You gotta yeah, I think it's really just uh, taking care of my body, doing my same uh, regimen as far as recovery. Um, you know, last year was my first time um, changing up my diet, and um, I think it's benefited me well and just keep doing those things um, until the last game and um, uh, continue in the all season as well. What changes did you make to the diet? Yeah, I don't do uh, any gluten. I don't do any fried foods. I don't um, uh, eat any dairy, uh, no artificial sugars. All I really drink is, is water. Um, but I got to discover these Olipops, man, uh, the prebiotic drinks. I've been kind of hooked on them. I got to get off of them. But really just water and, um, yeah, just stay away from gluten, fried foods, dairy, and, um, yeah, just trying to be as healthy as possible to have it benefit me. Where do you feel maybe that has helped you? Uh, do you feel a change in how you feel from day to day? Or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, um, I mean, I ain't getting no younger, so hopefully the food will help me feel a little bit younger. But it's helped me tremendously with my uh, energy, um, um, you know, getting hit so much. You know, you get caused, you know, so much inflammation um, during the season and, you know, the quick turnarounds and things like that. So, you know, putting the right things in your body to – you know, uh, decrease the inflammation in your body is, is very important. So that's why I try to focus on. Derek, I don't know if this helps at all, but like this season, even home games have been pretty like well temperature wise. It hasn't been too cold. And then the games that you've had that have been away at the end of the season have been kind of in hot weather places. I mean, does that help with not having those cold temperatures at this time of year that you're usually out there in with your body? 
Yeah, I mean, um, I, mean I guess the weather's on our side this year. I don't want to jinx us because we still got one <laughs> home game left. But um, yeah, it's been, it's been great weather this year, um, good weather conditions. Um, you know, the result hasn't been what we want it to be, but um, I don't know, God be looking out this year as far as the weather's for sure. When it's cold, is there a sense like a physical back like yourself? You know those guys don't want to hit you when it's cold out. So like, do you kind of relish an opportunity to play when you know guys are a little uncomfortable on defense? I'm a Florida boy, so I mean, I, I prefer warm weather, but um, you know, in football, the weather conditions is going to be what it's, what it's going to be. And um, when you're out there, you don't really, you know, you don't really feel the cold because your drone is going. You're trying to focus on what you got to do. And when you get to that bench, you definitely feel it. But um, you know, weather weather conditions, you still got to be effective, whatever it is. I know some guys like it, some guys don't. But to me, it's football, so you got to brace whatever comes with it. What do you think the reception is going to be like for Hop this week going back to Houston? Yeah, I hope they got some good from him, man. Um, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know when the last time. He's played there, or how, how how long it's been, but um, hopefully they they uh give him a, a great warm welcome. So he was a great player for him. Appreciate it. Uh, I guess with with uh, with Will, what's kind of been the plan? Is you still maybe wait to see whether he's gonna be available and trying to get quarterbacks ready to play? Yeah, yeah, no different than uh, uh, kind of what we've been in the past. Is is you know seeing where he's at. Um, Again, uh, everyone in that room is preparing as if they're the starter and, and uh, making sure that, that if and when their number's called, they'll be ready to go to help us win. you feel like you looked pretty good yesterday? Uh, I mean, it, it was pretty limited, but yeah, I thought, I thought you know, for, uh, for where he's at, I thought it looked good. What can you say about the importance of every game, even late in a season like this, for the growth of a young quarterback and his need to be out there as often as possible? Yeah, I mean... Uh, you know, with some of the conversations that that we've just had, you know, throughout these these sessions, it's um, a lot of times you're you're only learning things through experience. Um, so, uh, you know, any ability he's he he gets to be able to go out there and help us win, um, you know, he's, is is going to be good. Uh, it's going to continue to help him uh, learn and grow and, and develop um, in, into the type of player that that he wants to be. So, um, yeah. How do you like uh, how the line did uh, this past week? Um, yeah, uh, I mean they fought. They did a good job. Excuse me, good job on uh, in the run game. Uh, we were much more efficient, uh, able to create more consistent uh, lanes and, and, and holes for our backs. Um, and then you know uh, continuing to fight in pass protection. Um, got got to continue to do a better job of, of you know keeping our quarterback clean. Um, and, and again, as always, it's everybody. It's it's uh, you know the guys outside. Um, it's it's the quarterback. It's the running back. It's the play caller. It's all of us being able to go and, and, and make that make sure that happens. So, uh, going to continue to work on that today and, and, and make strides. What about Rockets in particular? Is it, has how he has developed uh, here, kind of working his way up since you've been here? Yeah, he's. I mean, he's big. He's a, he's, he's a large human being. Um, and, and the energy that he plays with is, is not only noticeable, but contagious. Uh, watching him run to the football, uh, protect the guys with the ball, um, it, was, it was good to see. It was, it was fun to see uh, just because there was just such an energy that he played with, um, and, and he did a good job. You know, um, I, I thought they had a good front. Now, obviously, there's going to be some plays that everybody wants back, but for the most part, Ruppy did a good job for us. When you look at a guy like, like Hopkins, he's, what, 61 yards from, from 1K, how do, does that play into your play calling, especially with it being there in Houston and everything that surrounded that, like the opportunity to get one cater? Yeah, I mean, and anytime we can get him the ball, I think it's going to be beneficial for us. So uh, I wouldn't say that that's a, any type of uh, extra motivation or, or, or going to going to alter or change our game plan or the way that we're calling it to try and to try and do that. But obviously, those those milestones and those goals are important for for our guys. And, and when our individuals are out there having success, a lot of times that means that we're having success as a team. So um, you know, I'm, he'll he'll get he'll get what whatever he he's going to need to get, and that's all. It's it's going to come naturally. It's going to come naturally with a player like Hop. You don't have to um, you don't have to try to generate touches or generate targets. Um, He's such a talented player where a lot of times that, that you know, it's going to come organically for us. How much of a calming, steady influence has he been for you as, as a play caller, you know, knowing that he's going to do what he does? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I've, t I've told him a couple of times where, you know, as far as, as, far as uh, guys on the football field, there's, there's not very many people that I trust more than him. Um, just in terms of, of his ability to show up every week, um, you know, he's out there every single game. Um, he's, he's fighting. You know, he's a fighter. He's, he's a warrior when he plays, um, and he's productive. So, um, 
Yeah, studying. I mean, however, however we want to phrase it, it's it's good to have a, a hop in, in our building. You know that guy's fan base well. Just how do you think he's going to be received returning this week? Uh, better than me, probably. <laughs> <laughs> your your receivers have the second highest yards per catch receivers in the league. The other teams that are up there, San Francisco's number one, Miami's tied for number two, are regarded as offensive juggernauts. But why do you think for you guys it hasn't translated that way? Yeah, I think it, it you know, unfortunately it, 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 it seems to be a, a theme here is just the ability to con consistently do that. Um, I think there's been stretches where uh, we've been, we've demonstrated the ability to be explosive and be productive. Um, and then there's times where we haven't for whatever reason, whether it's, um, you know, a drop, whether it's uh, uh, protection, whether it's a quarterback decision, whatever it may be. Um, so, you know, as, as we continue to grow and, and, and improve, you know, that's going to be the biggest thing that we're striving for is just overall consistency. Tim, what's the challenge when you face a team on the schedule here twice in three weeks mm -hmm. facing that defense? And specifically, the way they handle the bottom of your run game the first time around. Do you view that as it's a tweak here or there? Or do you have to do things almost like wholesale differently to try to counteract what you saw? Yeah, we definitely can't do the same thing we did. Um, but no, there's there's probably going to be a, you know, we, we got to do things differently. Uh, and we have to do things better, really, is what it's going to come down to. Uh, our ability to go out there and execute uh, at a higher level um, is going to lead to us having a more efficient and effective performance. That's good. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, guys. Too backup situation last time yeah I mean uh I think schematically I don't know if they changed a whole lot um it's just understanding everything that CJ can do um been a really good player this year for them making a lot of really good throws for him I think the thing that stands out the play extension keeping his eyes down the field hit a ton of plays um we got hit on one obviously the first game um late in the game so that's going to be a big thing for us so um a little bit of difference, obviously, just understanding the quarterback and who he is. But schematically, I don't know how much difference it's going to be. Defensive line guys, heck, Danico's listed as a defensive lineman. I know he's with the linebackers. Everybody else is somebody that you might not have heard of before the season started. What do you think of what you've gotten out of them so far? Yeah, I think they're doing a really good job. I think they all have come in here and understand kind of their role, what the expectation is of them. Um, they're taking advantage of their opportunity. That's all we can ask of them. Come in here ready to work, learn, improve, and then come Sunday, make sure you're taking advantage of, of your opportunity. Because for a lot of these guys, man, it's it's something they haven't had, right? Whether it's coming from practice squad, coming from uh, not being on a team potentially, they're getting a new new lease of life right now in the football in the National Football League, and hopefully they continue to take advantage of their opportunity. How about Otis Reese and how he's how do you think he played for Mike was kind of complimentary of his aggressiveness and his tackling. How would you say he did? Yeah, I thought he did a good job. Um, I was pleased with him. I thought he was flying around. He I mean, has a great chase play where he's coming from the opposite hash and he makes a tackle on our sideline for two, three yard gain. Um, just continuing to play with that urgency. I think continuing the communication aspect of everything that goes into playing linebacker. Um, but overall, for the most part, I thought he did a really good job. Boom. Think you're good. Hey, we got a practice squad. I know you're trying to get some of those guys up to speed. What, what's that process like and trying to get them with the plan as, as quick as possible? Uh, you just meet with them, walk through with them, and then practice and just see where they're at at the end of the week to see if they could help us. So do you think some of those guys potentially could help you? I think they could. I mean, a lot of them have played in the league. Most of them, I think all of them have played in the league. So uh, Tay Crowder was with us when I was at the Giants as a rookie in the next couple of years. So there's a little bit of familiarity there with him. Nick Cook, I mean, he, obviously he's been doing this a while, but to be able to continue and have that consistency uh, at his age, is, 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 is it just kind of like a metronome for him almost at this point? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think all the specialists, they want to get to where it's just a repeated process each and every time. And he's done that through a lot of years of hard work. So that's kind of where he's at. When you're at, at, at that age, though, <laughs> does it make it a little tougher? To, have you, have you no, noticed he's, he's really smart with his body. He knows his body well. He trains it well. And, um, you know, from the time he started to where we're at now, he 
doesn't overkick. There's a certain number that he has in his head, and he goes and he hits that number and keeps his leg fresh. It's been something that he's been doing for the last, I'm sure, five, six years. Is that part of the decision to have Sentner out there doing some of the kickoffs? Or we want to take a look at him. He's a guy that uh, in college he had to kick field goals, kick off, and punt. He initially was just punting and kicking off. So we wanted to take a look at him. I thought he did a, a good job with the hang distance and location. It's kind of been the thought process that led to Corey Levin being one of the guys back on kickoff return. Uh, just trying to get a bigger guy and trying to use the roster the best you can. You know, you only have so many spots on game day, so you try and fit and equal out the playtime as much as you can. Is that no, we do not want him to go back and catch the ball. <laughs> How's that? He crossed it off his bucket list and he's done. Mike has, has been complimentary of Colton and just how much he's improved and helped on teams uh, over the course of the year. Have you seen, I guess, improvement from him yourself? Colton yeah, Bell. yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, big, strong kid when he came in. Uh, didn't play a whole bunch of teams, but they did play a little bit at Martin on the punt team. And he's just gotten better. He works, you know, Levine has worked really hard with him, all those young perimeter guys to keep developing them and getting them to a point where they can produce. Nathan Levine, Ben, his first year here in your mind as far as being the He's great. Uh, I've had ex-players be assistants before. And Larry Izzo, who we faced last week with Seattle, he was my assistant in New York for four years. So <clears throat> they got a unique set of eyes. They relate very well to the players, but they've also, the positions that they've played, They've seen the drills, they've seen the schemes, they really understand it from a coaching aspect of it. So the transition is usually pretty easy. It's just the hours that are usually a little bit difficult, but every guy I've worked with have been outstanding with it.